The unknown is a persistent fear that lingers in the back of our minds. We try to cope with this horrifying feeling by making it tangible enough to rationalize. This is why most horror stories take place at night, when vision is limited. Darkness can cause dread because the imagination can conjure up the worst monstrosities. To create a truly horrific monster, Josh Mallerman wrote a story that capitalized on this universal fear. Published by HarperCollins and Film Option from Universal, Bird Box describes the terror of hiding from a deadly, unseen creature. Origin unknown, these monsters invade human society, eradicating through visual manipulation. A mild glimpse at these creatures can turn a rational human being to a violent, suicidal maniac. The book does not detail these monsters in any way, instead focusing on the point of view of a few characters as they adjust to this new, isolated world. After acquiring film rights from Universal, Netflix created a film adaptation with leading actress Sandra Bullock as the character Mallory. Creating a monster that cannot be seen through a visual medium is a difficult task, and the movie has its shortcomings because of this factor. This is not to say that it is a terrible film, in fact, there were some interesting ideas that were placed, but the overall film did not assimilate with what made the novel unique in its horror. The film kept the same premise, but altered the plot and characters to create a more standard scary movie formula. Although the visuals are well crafted, the character and plot changes do not set the film apart from other horror films. Unlike the book, it relies more on the action side of the story instead of the psychological. The first major difference to start the story is with the main protagonist, Mallory. In the novel, she is uncertain of her pregnancy, as she recalls the last time she was intimate with the unseen character Henry Martin. She struggles with the idea of becoming a single mother, although her sister presses her to contact the father. Mallory and her sister Shannon drive to the pharmacy to get a pregnancy test before confirming what she already knew. Shortly after, the creatures arrive to their location. They had heard about the suicides in Alaska and Canada, but they were moving at a fast pace, already landing in the Upper Peninsula where Mallory's parents lived. Calling them, Mallory discusses her pregnancy and the epidemic that is happening. At this point, neighboring houses were preparing for what was coming. As their conversation ends, Mallory and her sister cover the windows in anticipation. They hide in their homes for three months, trying to ration out their food. They do not dare leave the house. As the news fills her in about society crumbling, she walks to her sister's room to inform, but finds only a corpse. Shannon had mutilated herself with a pair of scissors. She had somehow looked through the big window in her room, something that was hinted at when the sisters were debating about their living situation. Mallory looks upon the bloodied remains, causing her to become desperate enough to leave. Shannon's death is a well-written scene that presented the suspenseful style of horror. Mallory must navigate her quiet home when her calls are not answered. It creates anxiety for the character until the realization is revealed. It reads, Stepping down the hall, she sees sunlight coming from Sharon's bedroom. Slowly, she comes to the open door and looks inside. A corner of the window is exposed. A part of the blanket, having come loose, hangs. There is a stillness and a faint hum from the television below. Down the hall, the bathroom door is open. Shannon is on the floor. Blood surrounds her, pulling into the tiles. Mallory screams and slides to the ground, wailing. The stillness of her sister's eyes. The way Shannon's shirt sinks into her chest with the scissor blades. Josh Mallerman does not write Shannon's actual suicide scene, instead presenting the death in its final form and giving a descriptive scene for the audience to imagine. In fact, all the character deaths are not written as they play out. Since the book takes the perspective of Mallory, the audience can only understand from her point of view. Since her eyes are closed when the creatures attack, the book only presents the outcome of each death, leaving the reader to place the pieces together. After vomiting in the bathtub, Mallory tries to regain control of herself. She remembers an ad in the paper about a house that was a sanctuary for people in need. In a dangerous attempt, Mallory drives to the house, closing her eyes whenever she senses movement. The streets are completely desolate, giving the scene an eerie feeling as she makes it to her new home. The introduction of the plot is very subtle. There are small details that reveal a populace who are scared and worried. They know what is coming, but are not quite ready for it. The characters, and the reader for that matter, cannot comprehend what is happening. A potential apocalypse is coming, but there is no explanation for it. No ideas or mythos is ever regarded as definite. The only rationalization for this event is an invasion of creatures that are clashing with the world. This is a clear example of fear of the unknown. The book does not ease the tension by having the creatures be described, or even directly engage the protagonist. The film also does not delve too far into the creatures, using wind and audio effects to cue the audience in on their presence. 
The final cut was going to reveal what the creatures look like, but luckily they made the right decision to leave it out. These baby-faced monsters would have taken away the terror that the audience would create for themselves. Fear of these unknown creatures lingered throughout. Therefore, it was disappointing to see the film scrap the subtle horror of the book's opening for a War of the Worlds type invasion. The movie relocates the setting from Michigan to California. It was a questionable change to see at first, but soon reveals why this is the case. A glyph of Alaska appears on the news, informing the audience about the creatures spreading throughout the world, much like the book. The film wanted a chaotic opening, which is why they made the location closer to the sighting so that the community was not prepared. Mallory is already a few months pregnant at this point and is getting an ultrasound with her sister, renamed Jessica. As they leave the hospital, a woman sees a creature and begins bludgeoning herself against a glass window. Disorder erupts not only at the hospital, but to the entire city. Jessica steps back into a speeding garbage truck after giving one final sorrow glance. Mallory does not have much time to reflect on her sister's death. She runs away as people destroy themselves on the street, but manages to seek shelter in a nearby home where the plot becomes parallel with the book again. Besides the opening plot differences, the character dynamics are also changed. Upon reaching the safe house, Mallory is introduced to her new housemates. The characters of Douglas, Tom, Cheryl, Felix, and Greg all appear in both stories, but some differ in personality and backstory. Cheryl and Felix are not as present in the film like the novel. They were very keen and consistent in helping to maintain the house. Felix matches the character well enough in appearance, but portrays him as a drug dealer. This idea to portray him in this way was not completely random. It was expanded upon by a scene in the book when Felix shares his marijuana with the group while they try to settle their nerves with drinking. For the most part, Felix is a well-to-do kid, and it is a shame that the film let his character disappear early on in the story. He had a well-remembered scene that was cut from Netflix's adaptation. Felix helps bring water to the group by filling buckets up from the nearby well. His waist is tied up with a rope to help guide him back to the house. On his third trip, he has a close encounter with a creature. He hears the sound again, for the third time. It is coming from inside the well. Something moved. Something moved in the water. Did something move in the water? Suddenly he feels cold. Too cold. He is shaking. He waits. And the longer he waits, the more scared he gets. This is the first real encounter the housemates have with a potential creature since Mallory arrived. It is never clarified whether it was a creature or animal, but it left a huge impression on Felix. It left him doubting what he heard or felt. Upon reporting this, it causes concern in the household over their drinking water. Felix continues to doubt what had happened because he understands what this would mean for their survival. His character would go on helping the group long after the incident. He was also present during Mallory's labor. Moving on from Felix, there is Cheryl who has a different appearance and personality. Her age is not touched upon in the book, but she seems much younger than her character in the film because of the amount of physical work she does and her colored brown hair. She is initially belligerent towards newcomers like Mallory. She even sides with Dawn when the Gary situation arises. Both stories place her near Mallory when she is giving birth, but Cheryl does not contribute as much in the film. The only major action taken by her is knocking Douglas unconscious when he threatened to shoot the character Gary, which contradicts the stand she took in the book. Olympia, who arrives shortly after Mallory, is also different in her physical likeness. The book describes her as having pale skin and dark hair, unlike the actress portraying her. Her pregnancy plays a role in Mallory's life which binds them as the story progresses. Greg, named George in the book, is still the owner of the home, but the film adds to his character by mentioning his homosexuality and past conflict with the character Douglas. Douglas, known as Don in the book, is suing Greg for trying to alter the appearance of their house. Greg's death is met early on in both stories, but Mallory was only present for the film's version. The book's account was more gruesome when Greg sees the monster through a camera. While the movie has him crack his head open, he ends up sawing through his skin with the ropes that bind him. Mallory never meets Greg in the book, and his death is revealed to her through Tom. Next there is Douglas. The character is much younger in the book. He is approaching 30 and has a full head of hair unlike the actor John Malkovich. His personality is very consistent with the book acting as the antagonist in certain situations. His character is understandable, however, because intentions are geared more towards survival than compassion. The film tries to justify his unlikable personality by having his wife die in front of him as she tries to help bring safety to Mallory. This all comes to head when the character Gary arrives. Douglas does not trust him, wanting him to leave despite the group deciding he is safe to stay. Gary will end up serving as the main factor for the downfall of the group. So even though Douglas's selfishness appears unjust, his intuition would have kept them alive. Next, there is the other supporting character, Tom. Like Douglas, Tom's personality is portrayed similar to the book, but lacks the same physical characteristics. The book has him with blondish hair, blue eyes, freckles, and a pronounced mustache with a stubbed beard. 
The film does not include these traits and humorously gives him the opposite type of facial hair, a beard with a stubbled mustache. Mallory says he looks like a teacher, which happens to be his profession. He became a teacher because of his curiosity in how things work, a trait that pushes him to figure out what the creatures are. The movie version of Tom is a construction worker who wandered to the house after his company was attacked. Tom pursues an intimate relationship with Mallory which never occurred in the written work, but it is not surprising to see because of their strong connection to each other. Building on their relationship made sense for the film, which adds more emotional weight towards the end. One character not mentioned in the movie is Jules. He was like Tom in personality and ideals, but they wanted a more unique personality that did not closely resemble Tom. Thus, they created the character Charlie that also included some minor comedic relief. The script also added Lucy, a police academy student, to add more strength to the group, but she felt squandered since they did not expand on her character. Along with Felix, she too disappeared early on in the story as the two of them leave to serve a plot need. At this point in the narrative, Mallory begins to reveal herself. She is a dynamic character in the novel. Initially scared and hopeless, Mallory evolves into a strict and assertive mother. The novel has her initially disoriented when finding the house. She faints only a few moments after meeting the group. Passively, she allows Tom, Jules, and Dawn to decide what to do next. It takes time for her to adjust to this new life. It is only when Tom and Jules leave the house for a few days that Mallory starts to speak up. She takes control by making sure everyone is continuing to do their chores. After giving birth to her child and taking on another, she is left alone without a single person. Although she does not have experience in this new world, Mallory teaches the children to live through their ears instead of their eyes. The book structure, like the movie, alternates the timeline between the housemates and her children. Mallory acts like two different characters in each time frame that slowly collide towards the climax. The book is well crafted in this way when it comes to the character development, but the movie negates this until the very end. The film establishes Mallory's character as an autonomous and strong-willed woman because of her strained relationship with her parents. Her character is static throughout the film, which dilutes her character arc when the film flashes forward to her scenes with the children. A clear example of this difference in personality is when the character Olympia arrives at the housemate's door. Tom takes control of the situation, disregarding Douglas' warnings. In the book, Mallory stays silent like the others, but the film's version has her aggressively wielding a shotgun ready to kill. By the end of the film, there is little change in her strong personality. The traumatic events of the story seem to have less effect on her. In fact, hardly any of the characters go through dramatic change in the film, other than Charles who overcame his fear to save the group. Having the main protagonist static throughout a story is not necessarily required, but it helps engage the audience as they journey through the tribulations of a particular person. There was one more member of the household that did not find their way into the film. It is the border collie, Victor. Owned by Jules, Victor acted as a guard, barking and growling when situations did not feel right. Dogs play a prominent role in the Bird Box novel. It was an idea that Tom came up with when he thought about traveling outside the house. It was thought that dogs were not affected by the creatures, so they would act as their owner's eyes. Because Jules did not want to test out the theory on his own beloved dog, Tom and Jules set out to find strays, which they successfully do. Dogs are not present in the film, but horses were mentioned early on by Mallory's sister, Jessica. Horses would have been an interesting substitute since the rider can be guided through the animal's eyes and sense of direction. It is too bad that this aspect was not tested out in the film. Instead of using animals, the group hatches an idea of transportation when they become desperate for food. Charlie is a worker at the grocery store, which gives them access to it since he has the keys. The film cleverly uses modern technology to help them reach a far distance. By covering up the windows, they use the car's GPS and proximity sensor to guide their path. With the scene mainly focused on the interior of the car, the attack was presented in a suspenseful way. The proximity sensor's constant beeping as they become surrounded immerses the audience by leaving them to their own imagination. Unfortunately, this is the only scene that cleverly draws out fear like the novel. After arriving and getting situated inside the store, the group was able to find an abundance of food that would last them for a while. Thoughts of staying inside appeals to Douglas, but they decide to leave, however, mainly because this movie is not called The Mist. Before leaving, they find a cage of birds which gives us the title of the story. They become useful to the group because they find that the birds are alerted to the presence of the creatures. The birds in the novel, however, chirp at any person's presence, creature or human. Either way, the birds become an alarm system, notifying the housemates of the impending danger. While Mallory was the first to notice these animals, it was Tom and Jules that found them in the novel. Instead of going to the grocery store like the film, Tom and Jules decide to blindly walk through the neighboring houses for food and watchdogs. In one of the houses, the chirping birds lures the two men and gives Tom the idea on how to use them. The birds are featured more prominently in the movie. They are placed in a box that Mallory carries with her when she takes the boat ride with her children. They are used to detect the creatures, but are not used during the sequence in the book since the children have better equipped hearing. 
On the subject of travel, the housemates are forced to scout new territories for resources. One element the film disregards during these scavenges is the precaution the group takes. In the book, Tom and Jules are described wearing crude armor made from common household items and helmets. They use broomsticks as guides and to feel around for the creatures. Entering a new building takes time. They touch every window and take hours of searching before removing their blindfolds. The film decides to leave out these few hours mainly for pacing reasons. There are several instances of the characters taking off their blindfolds without searching the entire structure of the house. The turning point of the story happens with the character Gary appearing outside the housemate's door. What made the book engaging was the rationality of all the characters. Before making decisions, they argued over the morality and consequences of it. Tom was mainly on the side of helping people and trying new ideas, while Douglas thought the opposite. They made their cases and the rest of the group voted on what they felt was the right decision. Each character was conflicted, but went with what they felt was right. In the end, democracy won. Because of this, the book explains the motivations for actions taken. When it comes to the case of Gary, the group ultimately decided to let him live, even though some were not so comfortable with the idea. The film shies away from voting and relies on a character impulse like most horror movies do. Instead of Mallory hearing the door and waking everyone else, Olympia opens the door for Gary, which is a very questionable decision and can take some viewers away from the movie. This decision completely strips the believability because Olympia's character motivation is not clear. The movie did this, however, to illustrate how Douglas's cold, sometimes heartless judgments were justified. If they had not let in Olympia like he said, she would have not opened the door to Gary. Douglas becomes violent during the confrontation with Gary, but is subdued before he could do any damage. Isolated from the group, he ends up becoming the hero when Gary sabotages them. Although he was the unlikable character out of the bunch, he ends up being the rational one. The book has a different outcome for Douglas. Because of the vote, he is unable to threaten Gary, but instead befriends the man. They become close as Gary subtly manipulates him through conversation. After revealing himself to be a madman through his journals, the group rightfully kicks him out and Douglas becomes the one to defend Gary's innocence. Hurt by this decision, the characters sympathize for Douglas knowing that he had lost a good friend. Although they try to reconcile with him, the book exposes Douglas to be the new antagonist. Brainwashed, he lets Gary back in and helps the creatures attack the housemates. People like Gary who are mad from seeing the creatures do not physically force others to look at the creatures like they do in the film. They use persuasion and other methods to achieve this task. Because the film allows these mad people to physically harm the sane, survival becomes hopeless which creates greater challenge for the characters. A perfect example of this happens after Mallory and Tom escape with the newly born kids, a scene that was never written in the original story. They are better equipped to handle walking blindfolded, but circumstances change when they are hunted by a mad pack of people. After investing time into Mallory and Tom's relationship, the movie does an excellent job setting up the demise of Tom. Surrounded, Tom tries to distract the gang while Mallory escapes with the children. Knowing he cannot kill them all without sight, he takes off his blindfold. Hope seems imminent as he closes in on the final enemy, but a creature sneaks up behind him. Before going mad, he shoots the gang member before turning it on himself. This scene was well executed and creates a more emotional death for Tom than in the novel. It is similar to the way Olympia's fate is handled in both mediums. Upon seeing the creatures for herself, she is able to give one selfless act before the madness engulfs her, by handing over her child to Mallory. The deaths are more common throughout the film, but the book waits until the climax to kill off its main characters in gruesome ways. Olympia falls from the top story of the house, but ends up hanging from her umbilical cord, rocking back and forth against the wall. The rest are killed, including Tom, by Douglas letting the creatures inside the house, but the aftermath is revealed only after Mallory steps downstairs. She is left alone with two newborns. Gary takes his leave from the home and is never seen again. Soon after, Mallory gets a phone call from an unknown person. He introduces himself and tells her that they are building a safe place for people to live, but is only accessible by going downstream. This begins her long quest of training her children to survive the deadly journey. In the book, the children are well trained. They are better at using their hearing to guide them than Mallory. In fact, they help her during the boat ride by listening to the distant sounds. After a scuffle with wolves along the bank, Mallory has her arms gashed severely. Her blood loss keeps her from rowing, and she ends up passing out. When she awakes, she finds that the children have taken control of the boat and tended to her. Mallory's harsh treatment has allowed them to be prepared for this new environment. It relieves her to know this because the book covers her teachings up to this point. Often, she doubted being a good mother and wondered if she was even capable of preparing them to survive. One scene has her contemplate blinding the infants with paint thinner. She comes close to doing it, but their cries dissuade her when she attempts to pour it over their eyes. The children's ability to survive gives a glimmer of hope about their future. On the other hand, the film makes them more of a liability in order to build tension and suspense as it reaches its conclusion. 
Instead of wolves, rapids cause the boat to flip over, but Mallory is able to get herself and the children ashore. While running through a forest, she falls down a hill and loses consciousness. Instead of following the noise, the children have no idea where she is. They are ill-prepared despite her teachings and endanger themselves because of it. The creatures close in on their location, further enhancing the suspense. Although the film does not detail too much of the children's upbringings, Mallory's character shifts drastically at this point. After finding the boy, he tells her that the girl fears her, and that is why she does not try to be found. Mallory breaks down and exclaims her guilt while also trying to spring hope for them. This was the film's way of delving into Mallory's internal conflict. In an earlier scene, Tom tries telling the children of the outside before the epidemic. He engages the kids with his description of a world they have never seen. Mallory shuts him down immediately because she does not want the children hanging on the false hope. She ends up breaking this mold when she realizes how her behavior has affected them. She finishes Tom's story, completing her own transformation. The final scenes that depict Mallory and the children's salvation play out the same as they find a new home from the Legally Blind. Both stories end on a hopeful outcome, as Mallory and the children find safety with a new community. Bird Box has been popular since its release on Netflix, starting memes and challenges alike. It is an interesting premise that can place the audience with the characters. The film experiments with its source material, creating new ideas and rules that vary slightly. However, the film felt very rushed, which happens when trying to fit into a strict runtime. The events transpire mere days apart, and much of the characters are not as fleshed out as they could be. The book was able to present a tale that focused on this aspect. It did not have the intense action sequences like the film, but it was able to keep the reader engaged through thought and anticipation. Fans of horror films may find the movie is a decent thrill, but the book stands out from other horror novels. Since sight is limited in the story, it makes sense to write a story through a visionless medium. As stated before, the film took on a tough challenge by adapting this novel. Its changes were a way to thrill their audience but came at the expense of losing the subtle terror of the novel. As a film, Bird Box is well directed and acted by its cast. The movie does not completely live up to the novel, but there is no denying that it popularized the story. Because of this, many viewers can discover this written work and have a different kind of experience than what they streamed. No matter which form of entertainment the audience prefers, the creatures from Bird Box will always be remembered, despite never having an appearance.